<laughs> oh, we're doing Battle of the Bulls today. You'll find all your reading and uh, questions and everything uh, under classwork, okay? Unfortunately, once again, you're going to probably see my back. If you can hear me addressing you, because everyone else is running their mouse also. As you can hear. All right, here we go. All right, Battle of the Bulls. Okay. If you're paying attention, you can probably answer questions as you're going through here. If you sit here and twirling your thumbs and not paying attention, you might have a little bit of trouble. Um, can y'all see it with the lights on? Yes, we can. That might make it easier for you to see your paper in front of you, too. All right. The Battle of the Bulge was a major battle in Europe during World War II. It was Germany's final attempt. Okay. Uh, this is this the reason this goes down is one of the greatest battles. Uh, we'll talk about in just a second. But it's the final attempt to drive the Allies off the mainland of Europe. Most of the troops involved on the Allied side were, were American troops. Okay, it wasn't just American, but most of the Allied troops in the Battle of the Bulge was American troops against the German troops. Okay, uh, it is considered one of the greatest battles ever fought by the United States military. Okay, uh, you got to think think of it like this: the Germans knows that if they lose this, they are probably going to lose the war. They have been ran out of France, okay, back into Germany. They're in, actually in Belgium right here, but they're on their way out of, I mean, France, Belgium, the whole bit. They're going back into Germany because they, the Allies are pushing them back, okay? So they know that this is it. If they lose this battle, they're, done. they're probably done. They're going to lose the war. Well, on the other side, you got the allies that are going, hey, we we've got them on the run. If we win this battle, we probably win the war. And we get to go home. And this thing is over. And that would be nice. Okay? So you've got some real incentive on both sides here. So they're putting everything they've got into this. Not that they didn't always, but this is do or die time, for at least for the Germans, okay? If the Allies gets beat, they just have to live to fight another day. But they're tired of fighting another day. They're ready to end this, this war, okay? So they, they know this is their opportunity. So this is a pretty pretty fierce uh, battle that's going on here. Okay, that's a picture of the 101st Airborne right there. Uh, notice the weather condition there. Okay, notice all the snow and stuff on the ground. Okay, it's winter time, it's snowy, cold. Okay, so where was it fall? After the Allies had freed France and defeated Germany and Normandy, many thought the world, uh, World War II in Europe was coming to an end. However, Adolf Hitler of Germany had different ideas. Okay, in the early morning on December the 16th, 1944, this is when this battle begins. December 16th, 1944, they launched a major attack, and this battle lasts for around a month. Actually, it's a little bit better than a month. Okay, it's like January 25th, 1945, before it ends. Okay? It's more than a month. Okay? Uh, the American forces fought back. They kept the German armies from overrunning Europe. But they are outnumbered. The Allies are outnumbered right here. The American troops are outnumbered. And outnumbered. Okay. Uh, so what was, what was the, the funny name? The Battle of the Bulge actually took place at Ardennes Forest in Belgium, where the German attack, they actually pushed back the center of the American. They overran them. Yeah. I mean, they, the Germans is throwing 200,000 troops at... Everything they had with them. And everything they got, tanks, everything. They're throwing everything they've got at the American troops. So they actually overrun the American troops, okay? But they talk about how if you could look at a map of the Allies Army front, what you would have seen was when they fell back instead of retreating pulled, and letting them through, which was smart, but. they bushed out. So it's just so And they continue to fight. Okay? And small groups would attack and fall back. Attack and fall back. And then one would fill in for Yeah. And they would just, they, and that's how they, they kept doing that, and they kept pestering the German army, and no. so they could not get a foothold or a toehold, if you would, on their advancement. Which 
which was very strong. Okay, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, Caleb. Oh, yeah, so um, they were just going back to a new line of cover. That's it. Like none of them were really. It was, basically, it was basically a throwback to, uh, if you would, to the, um, almost to the uh, Revolutionary War where you had the, uh, the, the hit, you know, hit and run type of uh, uh, thing. And, you know, you would hit, get undercover, come out, hit again, that type. Uh, today is known as guerrilla warfare. Uh, when the Germans attacked, they used over 200,000 troops and nearly 1,000 tanks to break through. 1,000. 1,000 tanks. That's, that's a lot of tanks. It was winter, and the weather was snowy and cold. The Americans was not ready for the attack. They also, their uniforms were, and they did not have the proper boots and overcoats and things they needed to be fighting Germany in the weather. Germany had white coats on, too. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you know, they're fighting, not only are they fighting the Germans, they're fighting the, the weather conditions also. <laughs> Uh, the Germans broke through the line, killed thousands of American troops uh, as they tried to advance very quickly through. Okay, they're trying to end this thing and get, again, get back into, you they know, fled, they the like troops well, back. Now, you can, that's a picture that kind of shows you the guys are laying around in the, I mean, laying in the snow. They're under, what they're doing, they're not just laying in the snow. They're hiding, you know, taking cover the best they can. Because they have black, they, they they're, pre they're pretty much, uh, their yeah. uniforms are pretty much black compared to this. Year. Exactly. So the Germans had a good plan. They also had English, this is what Caleb was talking about. They had English-speaking German spies that they dropped behind the Allied lines. And these Germans were dressed in American uniforms. They told lies. They tried to, con and to confuse the American troops so they wouldn't know what was going on. They would change road signs. They would cut telephone lines. Just that little they, they was giving false information, acting like it was coming down from headquarters. Okay. Actually, it was brilliant. I mean, it, it was brilliant on the Germans' part to do that. Okay. Uh, despite the quick advances in the overwhelming forces of the Germans, many American soldiers held their ground. Uh, they did not want Hitler to overtake uh, uh, Euro Europe again. So the Battle of the Bulge is famous for small pockets of American soldiers who attacked and harassed the Germans as they tried to advance. Okay? And it was just hit and get back. And then somebody else would hit and get back. And then somebody else would hit and get back. And so they kept them off balance by doing it that way. Waiting for reinforcements to come. And they held them off for a couple of three days waiting for Patton, yeah. the army, to show up and reinforce him, and he does. Okay? So one of the famous small fights that occurred was at the Baxon, Belgium. This city was a key crossroad, and the U.S. troops of the 101st Airborne Division and the 10th Armory Division were surrounded by Germans. Okay? They were ordered to surrender or die and the U.S. General Anthony McLaughlin didn't want to give up, so he replied to the Germans, nuts. Basically, he was telling them where to go. And it wasn't like back to France, if you get my drill. Okay. Talking downstairs here. <laughs> go, go. Okay. That's what he told them. Okay. So his soldiers then did manage to hold on uh, until U.S. troops could arrive. So they're surrounded, outnumbered, the bunch basically are captured for all, all reality, uh, other than the fact that they, they won't come out and give up. Uh, so they continue to fight, even though you know they figured it's over for them. Uh, it was a small group of American troops throughout the front who dug in and held out until the reinforcements could come that won that battle for the Allies. Uh, their courage and fierce fighting won the battle and sealed the fate of Hitler and the Nazis. Okay, because this was the, Normandy was the beginning of the end. This was, yeah, this was, this was you know, a, a, a dagger in the back of the Nazi machine right here. This, this is putting an end to it. Uh, it was shortly after this that uh, Hitler, uh, of course, does, uh, it's not around anymore. Uh, interesting facts, the Prime Minister of Britain, Winston Churchill, said that this was undoubtedly the greatest American battle of the war. Okay? 
One of the main reasons the Germans lost, they did not have enough fuel for their tanks because the Americans had bombed and destroyed all the fuel depots. And they couldn't, they couldn't find enough fuel, so they couldn't keep their tank moving. So they, even though they could use them to show use the big gun, they couldn't move. They couldn't move them. And if you can't move them, yes. it's a big deal. Yeah. Yes. Also, their tanks, like their engines, and that were freezing up and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. The weather, the weather has an effect on all this, the mechanical uh, stuff. Yeah, all absolutely. That, like, and if you don't have any fuel in the tank, yeah. usually it doesn't. Yeah, absolutely. All that, all that comes into play. Over 600,000 American troops ends up fighting in the Battle of the Bulge. There was 89,000 U.S. casualties, including 19,000 that died. Uh, Patton's Third Army was able to reinforce the lines within a few days of the initial attack. Uh, but these guys held on for three, you know, three, four days. Overran, outnumbered. Did the other seven thousand just like they just they was wounded? They were missing or something. Yeah, no, they, they probably some was missing. Casualties uh, also means like missing. Yeah, action. it just means you were injured, yeah. missing in action, things of that nature. Until until they know what happened to you, uh, you don't you don't go into the six hundred thousand six hundred thousand troops. And this originally, you know, I mean. That's a lot. That's quite. That's, that's a big movement. But they, they I mean, originally. I mean, that's, that's really bad. But like, it's yeah. still out of six hundred. Yeah. Originally, you don't have that many. Well, you think about it, most of those right there probably happen uh, on the initial attack. Yeah. That's when most of the, the the deaths occurred. Okay. Not all of them, obviously, but a lot of those occurred on that initial attack when they were overran. Um, that was when probably most of those guys uh, were killed. Were killed. Okay. All right. Bye.